Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, we're going to take an initial look at CentOS 8, which was just released today, right after this. So as many of you probably are aware, today, September the 24th, CentOS 8 was released, and I thought it'd probably be a good idea to do a first look on it and then do a demo on it uh, on the next video to go through some of the features and some of the things that it actually provides. So let's take a look at it and, uh, and see what it does. So uh, first rewind a bit, CentOS uh, releases major versions of its operating systems about once every two years. And that's in line with, uh, with uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, usually. Uh, and it varies, so it's not exactly two years, might be a little longer, might be a little less. But they maintain those versions for up to 10 years using security updates. And then there are minor uh, versions of the uh, operating system which are released about every six months or so, and those are done with security updates. This makes CentOS and Red Hat uh, Enterprise Linux, too, uh, a secure, low-maintenance, and reliable Linux distribution, which is commonly found in server rooms. So uh, let's take a look and see what, what's changed. So the first thing is they've introduced CentOS 8 Streams. And CentOS Streams, we'll talk more about it later, but basically it is a rolling release that sits between uh, Fedora on the upstream side and Red Hat Linux on the low stream on the low end side or the low stream side downstream side uh, and so it kind of sits in the middle of that and it's a new product it's different from uh, the deployable uh, CentOS 8 it, and also in CentOS 8 they have added the app stream repository which can be found in Red Hat 8 as well uh, and that is an extension of the traditional RPM format and that allows multiple versions of the components to be made available. So by default, the new one is installed, uh, but you can choose uh, different versions of it if you so desire. Yum has been replaced by DNF. And the reason for that is the app stream is allows for modularization and also faster performance. So that was the reason why they changed the DNF. <clears throat> Python 3.6 is the default. Python 2.7 is not installed by default. Uh, the GNOME shell is 3.28, and GNOME uses Wayland, and that's version 1.15 uh, that they're currently using by default. Xorg is available if you want to install it, but uh, uh, out of the box, uh, GNOME will support Wayland. Disk uh, encryption now utilizes Lux uh, version 2, and that's available during the install as a choice. So you can encrypt your hard drive if you want, and, uh, and then it'll require a password in order to unlock it and decrypt it. Kernel support now uh, is provided for the Berkeley packet filtering system, and this is really good news because that allows us to attach custom programs to points like sockets or trace points or packet reception. So if you're a developer, this is only gonna help aid in getting your application working. System-wide cryptographic policies includes TLS, IPsec, SSH, DNSSEC, and Kerberos. Uh, also, smart cards and hardware security modules are supported uh, with PKCS number 11, uh, and that's consistent now across the platform. I think before some of them had 10 and some of them had 11, but that's no longer true. They all have 11. IP tables has been uh, superseded by NF tables. And the firewall D uh, uh, now uses NF tables as its back end. NF tables is supposed to be better than IP tables and a little easier to understand and use. Uh, also, IP VLAN is now supported in uh, CentOS 8. Uh, virtualization. Uh, there's a couple of modifications here. One is the PCI Express based machine type Q35 is now is supported. Uh, uh, feature excuse me, now a supported feature. Uh, VMs can be created and managed with uh, the uh, cockpit. That, that was introduced in, in RHEL 8. That The cockpit feature is also in, in, uh, available to you on uh, CentOS 8. 
if you want to enable it. It's not enabled by default. QEMU introduces sandboxing, and that just adds more security to the VMs. Compilers, uh, uh, GCC is version 8.2. Yeah, I know. I keep wishing it was 9, I keep, <laughs> but it's not. I uh, just want to keep saying, oh, was it 9? Could it be 9? No, it's not 9. So <laughs> it's version 8.2, which is fine. Uh, GLive 2 is 2.28 and OpenJDK version 11 for Java, which is one release behind uh, the Oracle, which is version 12 at the time of this video. Red Hat uh, also recommends that when you're installing uh, uh, both RHEL 8 or uh, CentOS 8, that you don't turn on the server with GUI if you're inside of a VM, as this may prevent the GUI from launching. Now, I didn't have any problem with it. I, I didn't know that, so I went ahead and installed it under VirtualBox, brought it up with the GUI, and it was fine. It's working fine. Uh, so I didn't have any issues with VirtualBox. It may be an issue with QEMU. Don't know. I have not tried it yet on QEMU. Uh, also, NTP is not shipped with CentOS 8. I assume that means that they'll be using Crony E uh, as the uh, replacement, as a lot of places have gone. Also, 32-bit kernel is not included in CentOS 8 and uh, not available, so you can't even compile it. So, uh, so goodbye, x86 kernels, and as far as I'm concerned, good riddance. I mean, <laughs> 20 years is long enough. 32-bit should be gone. It should be long gone. We should be getting 128-bit CPUs, and uh, none of that's happened yet, uh, at, at least this point in time, I think. Uh, the reason why I don't really care much for 32-bit, I'm not a gamer and I like performance and 32-bit uh, is just too slow. Uh, you go to 64-bit, yeah, it uses more memory, but it also runs a heck of a lot faster. Uh, look for a demo coming soon. I'm working on that. I uh, don't have it done today. Uh, I like to take my time and really explore some of the features that, uh, you know, they're claiming that, that work in this new release and, uh, and then come back and show them to you and let you know what I found with them. So I don't try to rush that. Now, CentOS streams. I said it was, uh, it was kind of midstream between the upstream Fedora release and the downstream Red Hat release. So what does that really mean? So Fedora will continue to, to be the in-progress development platform for the major releases of RHEL, whereas CentOS Streams will be the in-development uh, release platform for the minor releases. That's a big change, because in the past, CentOS has always been downstream of RHEL. So anytime there was any patches or any changes, then we had to wait for CentOS to develop it. Uh, and they didn't, and the development team on CentOS didn't always get any input into the uh, RHEL development process. Now they do. Uh, they they are now an integral part of the development process of RHEL. I think that's pretty exciting. I think that's really good news uh, because you have Fedora, which is going to be driving kind of the major pieces, but you have CentOS that's driving the changes. Uh, within the minor release base, the uh, security portions of it, they get to influence to some degree what's going to be happening in RHEL. And so I, I just think that's exciting news. Uh, I think that's great. Long time coming and kudos to the guys that, that managed to get that to happen. Um, so uh, in other words, CentOS for the first time under streams can be ahead of RHEL. They can be on the point releases, they can be ahead of RHEL. And in fact, uh, even this release is, uh, the CentOS uh, uh, streams release is ahead of RHEL on, on the kernel. So just slightly, but it is ahead. Uh, and I, I hope that you enjoyed this very short uh, brief into the, lo into a, uh, the look of uh, CentOS. I'm going to come back probably tomorrow uh, and, try to, and try to go walk through a demo with you on some of the features of CentOS, and, uh, and we'll kind of see how that goes. Um, I'm, <clears throat> I'm gonna try to cover some of these new features, uh, particularly with you know, some of the like cockpit, maybe look at the app streams, and maybe, maybe even do a demo of, uh, of CentOS uh, um, streams, if, if, if that's something that you're interested in, let me know in the comments below, and uh, I might do a separate one for that. So uh, I know this is short, and uh, but, I just wanted to get an initial look out there and some initial impressions. I think, I think this is fantastic. I think there's a, a, just an amazing 
uh, amount of uh, uh, capabilities that CentOS has already. It's always been very stable. It's always been uh, uh, kind of my favorite for uh, test environments and development environments. So uh, hope to see you all again real soon, and I uh, hope you enjoyed this. Bye for now.